Hey guys, even here, again, just as I posted my prejudging video, we already have the results. Becher's Tabani actually ended up winning. Now, it was very obvious who's gonna be top two. It was between William Bonac and Becher's Tabani, and we knew that Nathan Diasha is gonna be third as he was. And uh, yeah, of course, Rubio Muscara got that fourth place. So that's our top four Rubio, Nathan, then William Bonac, and first place Becher's Tabani, as you can see. Now, if you guys watched my pre judging video, you know that I actually had William Bonac more likely winning than Becher's Tabani. I also said that I prefer Becher's physique, I like his shape, his structure, you know, those wide shoulders, small waist, classic lines, basically with a lot of muscle as well, a taller physique with overall more muscle, but I thought William Bonac was gonna win it, mainly because this was very similar to Emperor Cup Spain. I would just love to hear an explanation how Becker's Tabani lost the Emperor Cup Spain and won here. I don't have a problem with him winning the Dubai Pro. His coach is Milo Sharchev, so yeah, I was cheering for him prior to this show. I definitely had him as the favorite. But then when I saw these guys on stage, you know, I saw that William Bonac was really conditioned. Probably his best addition this entire season. And Becker's Tabani was, you know, really full, really big but he didn't have his usual separation, so I thought if Bonac beat him at Spain, and now I think the difference is even more noticeable in Bonac's favor, I thought it was gonna be Bonac who wins it, but then politics come into play, this competition is held in Dubai, in United Arab Emirates, in the Middle East, and Bakrus Tabani is from the Middle East, so I guess those guys wanted to give their $100,000 to their guy, you know, there probably is a little bit of that, and I'm assuming also the Emperor Cup Spain, those guys wanted to give it to William Bonac, because they knew that he can go to the Mr. Olympian, he needed a qualification, and Bakrus probably won't be able to go over there, but here, since they're both qualified, and it was close between Bonac and Bakrus, of course, Bakrus had a slight advantage, I'm sure there was that, at least a little bit of that. Now, I'm not saying that uh, Bonac was a ton better, once again, I do prefer Bakrus's physique, he is taller, he has wider shoulders, he has better structure, but again, I was basing this mainly off the Emperor Cup Spain. So you guys tell me, what do you think, who do you think actually looked better? Again, like I said, if you prefer taller physiques with uh, better structure, prettier shape, wider shoulders and so on, then it is Becker's all day long. And William Bonac, I mean, I don't pref I don't love his physique, it's not my favorite physique because he's a short, blockier guy, but the level of detail and, and fullness and the improvements that he actually made, like his legs were actually full and really detailed here, like all of the flaws that were kinda there, at the Emperor Cup Spain especially, they were gone here, like the back also looked better, everything was just improved. So I thought it's enough, but no, no, apparently it was Bakrus Tabani who wins this one. Now, also with Bakrus winning two shows and winning the second largest uh, show, prize money wise at least, in the world Dubai Pro, maybe he's gonna have better odds going to the Mr. Olympia with this kind of resume. There is that as well. And Nathan Diasha, he always kinda fails in these uh, bigger lineup shows. I mean, when there is one good guy, a really good guy, he manages to win. But when there is a couple of them, he usually fails. And I'm not saying he looked much worse here. I mean, yeah, it wasn't his best pick this season. He was definitely better at a show prior. He was uh, fuller and more conditioned, if you ask me. Here, he was kind of, he faded a little, like, he wasn't as detailed, he wasn't as big as full. When he won against Becker's, he actually looked a lot bigger, a lot fuller than Becker's, but uh, here at this show, I think I would say that Becker's was actually bigger, fuller and bigger. And it seemed like they were going for fullness, and apparently it was the right call, but conditioning was also very good, very, very good. So, it was a very good Becker's Tabani, he deserves this win, I'm not taking anything away from him, all I'm saying is that there is no consistency in the judging, you know, from Emperor Cup Spain to this show, maybe the judging panel is different, I don't know, but th there is a big discrepancy here, the criteria definitely wasn't the same at this show and at the Emperor Cup Spain, and if I had to say that one show was a robbery, then I would prefer to say that that was Emperor Cup Spain, because even at that show, I thought Backers was better. 
But then I thought maybe the judges were punishing him for the lack of details and the size in the legs compared to his shoulders, and Bonak was better in that regard, but no, apparently that wasn't really the case. Very weird. It's very difficult to understand these uh, judging decisions, but down below in the comment section, guys, you tell me what do you think. Do you think this is the right call? I would say, yeah, sure, I have no problem with this, but I would like to see more consistency in the judging in the future, not these kind of confusing decisions from show to show, but it is what it is, I'm glad that Backrose won this, he's two times qualified for the Mr. Olympia, this is actually his fourth year he is qualified, I hope he's gonna finally get it to the United States and compete at the Mr. Olympia, he deserves to be there, I know it's very tricky, but if Hadi is able to get over there, I'm sure there is a way for Backrose to do that as well, let's hope for the best, so once again, Backrose Dabani wins, William Bonac second, Nathan Diasha third, and Nexila Rubial Mosquera fourth. Now, I've seen some comments, people saying that he should place even lower than that, that he should be punished the way Hassan Mustafa was punished, you know, placing uh, eighth or something like that, but I, I don't see it that way, no, no. Even though the other two guys in this uh, top six callout are uh, more conditioned, uh, this much muscle, it can be ignored. The other three guys who are in the top three, they're also very big. And they have also better proportions, you know, smaller waists, smaller joints, smaller necks. So their physiques are looking um, more cartoonish. You know, and Exila is kind of straight up and down. There is not, there isn't a lot of wheat taper going on, not a lot of axe frame. And the main thing, of course, the lack of conditioning. He was definitely off at his show. I'm pretty sure this is worse than Prague Pro once again. I would like to see him improve his conditioning and come to Texas Pro in two weeks. Can he get conditioned enough in two weeks? Well, he can definitely improve it. He can certainly improve his conditioning and go against uh, Andrew Jack. Can he beat Andrew Jack after what I saw here? I don't think he can beat Andrew Jack. No. So maybe coming to the Texas Pro is not the smartest decision. Next week you have Tampa Pro. One week, that's not enough. Personally, I would prefer him to take another four weeks and do a later show and actually come conditioned. I'm pretty sure none of these three guys are gonna be competing anymore. So he has a chance, you know, there is a lot of great bodybuilders who are, who need to qualify anymore, I mean, there is Hunter Labrada, there is Andrew Jack, and the other guys, I don't think there, there is a lot of top 10 Olympia guys, I mean, John De La Rosa, I think he's doing this uh, Tampa Pro with uh, uh, Mohamed Fuda, can Nexila win that one, it's in one week, I don't think so, I don't think he can improve that much, it's not a peaking issue if you ask me, I think it's just a conditioning issue, so I feel like he should step back, work on conditioning for another four weeks and compete a little bit later, but if he did the Tampa Pro and if he improved conditioning a little bit, could he push those two guys, John De La Rosa, if he's doing it and Mofura, I don't know, maybe, 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 he is a monster, he's a freak, if he nailed his peak week and got a little bit more conditioned, maybe he would win that show, uh, Texas Pro against Andrew Jack, I definitely don't see it happening, I'm not sure what other shows are left, I think there is Legion Sports, I think that's the last one before the Mr. Olympia, I'm sure he can win that one, that one is usually a weaker lineup, there is a show in UK and in Italy as well, uh, against Hunter Labrada, that would be difficult as well, so he can try that, sure he can try it, but I mean, again, it's all about improving conditioning, I mean, the guy doesn't have the prettiest structure, that's true, but he is the biggest bodybuilder in the world today by far, nobody is this freaking massive, so if he nails the conditioning, really nails the conditioning, comes in, peel to the bone, shred it, with this much size and with conditioning, he doesn't need to be the most aesthetic guy, the most well-shaped guy, he can be the most freaky guy, kinda do what Nick Walker is doing and still do pretty well, at a Mr. Olympia even, we'll see, we'll see, but as of right now, only 4th place at the, at the Dubai Pro, he came in off and uh, Bekrus Dabani ended up winning his second show this year, whatever your thoughts are guys, tell me down below in the comment section, if you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, for more content like this guys, stay tuned, subscribe to the channel, thank you so much for watching, see you soon, all the best and bye bye.